Yes. Um, shall we start, sir? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, good afternoon to everyone. I welcome all of you to the 31st lecture in the lecture series in <coughs> lecture series in nonlinear dynamics conducted by the Department of Nonlinear Dynamics, Bharatidharan University, with the support from RUSA 2.0. It is my pleasure to introduce you today's speaker, Professor Michael F. Sanjuan from Spain. From, Professor Sanjuan is a well-known person to us. He visited our department already and they delivered a talk in an international conference on nonlinear dynamics organized by the Department of Nonlinear Dynamics about 10 years ago. I also met him once in his university when I was visiting two of his colleagues once, working in mathematics department in the same campus. Still, I remember his beautiful campus, which is on the outskirts of Madhuri. All right. In view of students, I would like to introduce today's speaker. I, I, I used to read out his biodata in a very brief manner. Professor Sanjuan is working as a professor of physics at the University of Rey Juan Carlos, Madhuri, Spain. He is the director of the research group in nonlinear dynamics, chaos, and complex systems. He is author of numerous publications in research journals and of several books. In fact, he has written a book with Professor Ross Shager in physics here. He is associate editorial board member of several internationally acclaimed journals in nonlinear dynamics and chaos. He has given invited lectures in many universities, not only in Spain and Europe, but also in United States of America, Canada, China, Japan, India, Australia, South Africa, and Africa. He has been a visiting research professor at the University of Tokyo, visiting research associate at the Institute for Physical Sciences and Technology of the University of Maryland at College Park, United States of America. And he is also a visiting research professor at the Beijing Jiotang University and also a visiting professor at the Punas Technological University. He is also a fellow of DILA Japan Society for the Promotion of Science at the University of Tokyo. In 2017, he was a full flight visiting research scholar at the University of Maryland. He is also a first recipient of the Chu Su Su Award for Distinguished Scholars in Nonlinear Dynamics and Control. He is honorary professor of Chichun University of Science and Technology. China, and honorary professor for a couple of universities in China. He also serves as the editor general of Spanish Royal Physics Society and a member of the scientific advisory committee of the European Physics Journals of the European Physical Society. He was awarded the Excellence Research Award granted by so Social Council of the University of King Juan Carlos. He is a corresponding member of the Spanish Royal Academy of Sciences, a foreign member of the Lucian Academy of Sciences, and a regular member of the Academy of Europe. So his biodata prolongs to many pages. So since I don't want to take much of his time, now I invite Professor Sanjuan to start his lecture. Over to you, sir. <clears throat> OK, thank you very much, uh, uh, Professor Sentilvelan. Let me. Uh... Uh, okay. <clears throat> so, first of all, uh, thank you very much, Professor Santilvelan. It's a real pleasure to have been, uh, I'm, I'm really honored to have been invited to this uh, lecture series in nonlinear dynamics. As I mentioned before to Professor Lasmanan, of course, it would have been a real pleasure to visit again Trichy that I visited several times now and uh, I, in a certain sense, I miss visiting India again. I hope this will be possible in the near future and also to have the opportunity to meet you and your students, etc. I'm delighted to see now the image of so many students attending this series of seminars and I really wish to say a few words concerning all the word, all the good work you guys are doing in nonlinear dynamics, starting from Professor Lasmanam, Professor Rayasekar, Professor Sentilvelan, 
uh, uh, many others that uh, uh, this is important for the students to know that uh, they are uh, actually in a place where the, 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 the initiatives and, uh, and ideas in Nolina Dynamics has been really remarkable. So my talk uh, is, uh, as the title indicates, new advances in measuring the unpredictability of physical systems basing entropy and water basins. And um, basically, as uh, you will see along the lecture, uh, it touches some fundamental aspects in the, uh, uh, of some physical systems model, in the, mo in the modeling of physical systems uh, by using dynamical systems and uh, uh, related to the capacity of prediction. And uh, uh, I will mention some of our uh, contributions to uh, either uh, uh, the notion of water basins or to the new concept of basin entropy. This is a war in collaboration with many people. Um, some of them are here in this uh, uh, photo. Um, uh, Alba Daza and Ale Alex Bahemakes from my university, uh, Professor Jane York from the University of Maryland, uh, uh, Bertrand Giorgio and uh, David uh, Gary Odelan from the University of Toulouse, Sam Dolan and Jake Shipley from the University of Sheffield, uh, Jesus Joanne, uh, Juan Diego Bernal and Alessandre Nieto also from my university. In physics, we have laws that determine the time evolution of a given physical system, depending on these parameters and these initial conditions. In multi-stable systems, with many bases of attraction, possessing fractal or even wadam boundaries, the prediction becomes harder depending on the initial conditions. Furthermore, chaotic systems typically present fractal basins a small uncertainty in the initial conditions give rise to a certain unpredictability of the final state. Very recently, we have introduced the new notion of basing entropy, providing a new quantitative way to measure the unpredictability of the final states in basins of attraction. In physics, uh, we are used to uh, the ideas of quantum and classical uncertainty mostly quantum uncertainty due to the impact of this idea in quantum mechanics. Everybody uh, is knowledgeable of the uncertainty principle of Heisenberg, where we cannot uh, predict uh, the position and the momentum at the same time of an uh, 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 elementary particle. However, not many people know that similar situation happens as well in classical physics. And uh, if, we, if we look at, uh, for instance, as a, uh, a reference, the famous Feynman lecture on physics, uh, in the volume one, uh, uh, and uh, the, sorry, sorry, the volume one, uh, uh, and, okay, uh, one of the uh, uh, chapters uh, there appears precisely the, 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 the notion of uh, uh, this kind of classical uncertainty. Uh, Richard Feynman mentioned in the book that, of course, we must emphasize that classical physics is also indeterminate in a certain sense. For already in classical mechanics, there was indeterminability from the practical point of view. Uh, wait a minute, what's happening? I'm sorry, I'm having a problem with my slides. Okay, now. So, uh, one of the key uh, ingredients uh, in chaotic systems uh, concerning unpredictability or uncertainty is the idea of sensitivity to initial conditions. This is definitely one of the sources of uncertainty. I wish to mention here a famous rhyme from uh, um, uh, this person here, which actually the, 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 there is a rich tradition in the English literature uh, for this uh, going back even to, to uh, uh, 
14th century, uh, which says the rhyme is for one of a nail. For one of a nail, the shoe was lost. For one of a shoe, the horse was lost. For one of a horse, the rider was lost. For one of the rider, the battle was lost. For one of the battle, the kingdom was lost. And all for the one of a horseshoe nail, implying that a small uh, 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 circumstance may be amplified along the course of events and uh, 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 the effects can be really strong. But there is another source of uncertainty uh, linked to fractal basins. And we can find the analogy by a river basin. Here in this picture, we have a, a, a landscape. We have a, a, a two rivers that is a divide in between uh, some mountains. So that uh, clearly uh, exemplifies uh, the notion of river basin in such a way that if a drop of water falls into the left uh, hand side, it goes to the river appearing on the left. If uh, the drop of water falls into the right, it goes into the river on the right, in such a way that rivers may act as if they were attractors. And clearly, this defines the notion of river basin. Well, here you have a plot of the river basins in India. Uh, different colors uh, uh, signify uh, different regions of the geography of India where supposedly uh, uh, defining a basin, supposedly that if a drop falls in the region, it will go to the river. So going back to dynamical systems and nonlinear dynamics, here we have uh, 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 these notions simplified in very simple ex examples. On the left, uh, we have uh, uh, in the uh, square A, we have uh, simply uh, a basin of attraction with one attractor in, in yellow, so that if we take an initial condition on the uh, uh, yellow point, it will definitely go to the attractor in this region. Uh, in, in, the, in the picture um, uh, uh, name B, we have two attractors. So we have uh, uh, we have pictures then with two colors, uh, meaning that if we take a red color, it goes to the tractor in the region uh, where uh, uh, corresponds to this basin of attraction, while the other tractor lies on the uh, uh, region color uh, in yellow, uh, meaning that any yellow uh, initial condition goes into this tractor. If we look at the uh, picture on the right, uh, we have two basic uh, nonlinear oscillators. One is the quadratic uh, with the quadratic nonlinearity, which means that there is a simple well and uh, uh, with a uh, local maximum, uh, implying that there is the possibility of escaping out of this uh, wall. And in phase space, uh, you have the picture of the basin. And uh, on the uh, right-hand side, we have a cubic uh, nonlinear oscillator, which is uh, uh, well known uh, as uh, the doofing oscillator. And uh, the picture also shows the, the basin uh, of attractions uh, with a, a, a white color or, or, or uh, um, almost uh, uh, black color. So a basin of attraction is the set of initial conditions whose trajectories goes to a specific attractor. So I'm trying to define or to recall for those of you who already know, it will be a good reminder. For those of you who do not know, it will be the way to learn the definition of what a basin of attraction means. So we can also uh, uh, consider these two types of, of basins. Uh, on the left is uh, a smooth basin, and on the right is a fractal basin. Both of them correspond to the Duffing oscillator, that is, a cubic nonlinear oscillator. You may observe in the in the one on the on the left <clears throat> that it's called a smooth because the boundaries of the the boundaries are perfectly uh, smooth curves, while on the 
the one on the right, you see that is almost the whole space space fractalized with the exception of certain areas uh, near the attractors that they're, they're, they're where the, the situation is slightly different. Uh, interestingly enough, on the picture on the on the right, uh, uh, it is a deterministic system indeed, but uh, near any almost all over the phase space near any initial condition, we can find points belonging to the other three uh, to the other uh, uh, um, attractors uh, uh, in this in this uh, region. There are six three attractors. So this means uh, clearly uh, 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 this notion that fractality implies unpredictability and uncertainty. Here is a good uh, uh, physical example of basis of attraction of a magnetic pendulum. On the left, you have a, 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 a pendulum. You will you you have a, um, a magnet, and uh, there are three uh, magnets on on the surface. <clears throat> so the the the, the uh, pendulum may move uh, periodically until it gets attracted attracted to one of the of the uh, of the magnets. Um, the picture represents precisely uh, the, the uh, initial conditions going into uh, one of the three attractors. There are three attractors that we color with the different three colors appearing in the picture. And you can see that there are certain regions where nearby one of the colors, uh, 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 there is another color so that the unpredictability is really strong. So we have here a case of chaotic dynamics implying fractal structures, the, and the fractal structures imply unpredictability of the asymptotic behavior. <clears throat> I will show you here a, a simulation to see uh, how this uh, is produced. We have here the three, the three uh, magnets. Uh, here is the motion of, uh, of, uh, of the pendulum, so that if it gets attracted to the, to the green one, we uh, plot it green. If it goes to the blue one, uh, we paint it uh, blue. If it goes to the red, uh, uh, red, and so on and so on, just wait uh, for the uh, evolution. It will take a very, very short time. And you will get the feeling about how the the uh, this uh, basis of attraction is constructed. With this resolution, we get this picture, and now uh, the resolution is changed automatically, and you will get uh, the nice picture that uh, actually we saw in the previous slide. So here we have two pictures that correspond to uh, the basins of this Hamiltonian uh, uh, below, which is the Henon Hales Hamiltonian. As you know, or uh, uh, I, I can tell you that Hamiltonian systems, conservative Hamiltonian systems, do not have attractors. So for for uh, having attractors, the system needs to be dissipative. But there is one property that this Hamiltonian has. There is a, a, a value of the energy above which the, the Hamiltonian becomes open so that an initial conditions in the region, in the central, central region in phase space, this corresponds to XY state space, uh, they are, they, are, they, are, they are open three kind of three axes or three gates through which a particle eventually can escape from this region, having started in this region. So this is why for a value of the energy above this energy, which is actually one over six, is approximately 0 0.166666. Uh, if it goes to the upper part, it will it will be uh, uh, painted as uh, green. If it goes to the left 
uh, it will uh, be painted blue. And if it goes to the uh, uh, to the right, it will be painted red. So there is a fundamental question. Uh, uh, by the way, uh, since there is no attractors, we cannot call these basins of attraction. We call them exit basins, which the idea is similar. It means that this color represents the set of initial conditions that bring the initial condition to one of the different possibilities. Here we have three possibilities. Okay, so there is a basic question arising here is, which basin is more unpredictable? Well, uh, the first time we, we, we raised the question, uh, the only way we had to answer this question was merely uh, intuitive. Uh, whenever I give a talk on this topic uh, in, in, in any of the places where I have I've been uh, 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 giving this talk, I used to ask uh, to the audience, which ones do you think is more unpredictable? And I will say that almost always, and um, probably always, everybody have had the intuition that the basin on the left is more unpredictable. So my, 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 my response has been, how do you know? Because you have no quantitative measure for doing that. Nevertheless, everybody has the intuition that the uh, basing on, on the on the left is more unpredictable. But this idea is what it brought us to further investigate this situation and to find the notion I will describe you later on basing entropy. Okay. And what kind of tools uh, exist uh, uh, in the literature concerning these uh, uh, topics? Well, Concerning unpredictability and fractal boundaries, the classical tool is the tool of uncertainty dimension that was already described in the paper by Greboji, McDonald, Ott, and York in 1983, where we have here two cases, the case of a smooth boundary and the case of a fractal boundary. In the case of the smooth boundary, typically we have that the fraction of uncertainty and initial conditions is proportional to the resolution so that the uncertainty dimension is basically one. While in the fractal boundaries, the, 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 the scale rule is uh, as written, a uh, fraction of uncertainty initial conditions is proportional to resolutions to the uncertainty dimension. And in the case of fractal boundaries, typically the uncertainty dimension is less than one, where, where alpha, is d minus d, where d is the phase space of the whole phase space, and d is the dimension of the of the of the boundary. Okay. We have also uh, uh, situations uh, rather more complicated, like riddle basins. All these pictures correspond to riddle basins. A basin A is riddled by B if for every point in A it's possible to find arbitrary closed points of B. Uh, in riddle basins, typically, uh, uncertainty dimension is close to zero, meaning something very surprising is sort of randomness of a deterministic system. But in order to even illustrate better these ideas, I will show you these four basins which have uh, the following characteristic. The four of them have the same number of pixels, uh, white and, um, and black. They correspond to different dynamical systems. Uh, uh, by single, simple inspection, one can feel that the predictability of each one is very different. So uh, 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 the point is that with the help of the uncertainty dimension, both basins on, on top have uncertainty dimension equal one. So this means uncertainty dimension do, does not help to discriminate from these two basins. Uh, <clears throat> uncertainty dimension in the, in the bottom ones is approximately 
equal zero. Uh, simple inspection uh, tell us also that these two basins are different. Uh, furthermore, there have been a, another definition in the context of uh, complex networks studying uh, is what uh, authors call basic stability, which is uh, an interesting notion to uh, study the stability of a, of a, of a system. Uh, uh, basically consists in counting the number of pixels in one, uh, for instance, uh, if we take uh, any uh, any of, of these uh, basins, we divide the number of pixels of uh, one uh, of one basin into uh, the total number of pixels. Since I have said that we have chosen so that the number of pixels are half and half, it means that the basin stability is one over two. No, no, uh, uh, and third dimension, no basin stability give us a clue about the uh, uh, unpredictability associated to these different uh, 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 basins. Actually, <coughs> I can advance you that uh, when we define the basin entropy and we compute the basin entropy for these four pictures, we will we we can uh, uh, test, we can check that actually the basin entropy increases from upper right to uh, 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 bottom, uh, 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 sorry, upper left to bottom right, uh, the basic entropy increases, as also our intu intuition concerning unpredictability tell us. But of course, there are some problems and limitations. Problem one, the third dimension does not take into account how many attractors you have. Here we have the example of the Newton fractal with uh, uh, three or uh, five attractors. <clears throat> Problem two, the uncertainty that I mentioned does not take into account the portion of the phase space occupied by the boundary. Both pictures have the same uncertainty that I mentioned. However, the phase space occupied by the boundary is much larger in the basin on the right. Problem three, the uncertainty dimension does not distinguish among riddle basins. In both of them, uh, uncertainty dimension is around zero, but they have different structure, as everyone can see. Furthermore, there is the notion of basins of WADA. The, the notion of basins of, of WADA stems from a topological property associated to in the composable continuum which is a topological concept introduced in mathematics uh, at the beginning of the 20th century. <clears throat> uh, this uh, notion was uh, um, used by uh, Professor Jorg and collaborators uh, in the beginning of the 90s uh, to uh, introduce the idea uh, to dynamical systems and uh, 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 the first paper, pioneering paper, was precisely published in 1991 with the name of Basin of Wada. <clears throat> Wada is a, is a, 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 a topologist from, from Japan. And the Wada property est establishes that three or more basins may have a common boundary, something which is uh, uh, rather counterintuitive. But this uh, implies how, uh, I would say, complicated uh, uh, some basins might be. Furthermore, water basin boundaries, uh, the, the existence of water basin boundaries imply that the system possess uh, 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 more unpredictability in its dynamics. This picture uh, uh, shown here corresponds to the water basins of the pendulum for a certain set of parameters. Here is, you have the equation of the pendulum and this, uh, you, you will see uh, this uh, pretty picture. Uh, uh, there are some areas where the, 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 uh, around any, any one of the colors uh, is sixth, uh, another of the colors. Uh, so one can have the intuition that the unpredictability is uh, uh, rather large in certain areas. 
<clears throat> until very recently, uh, this result uh, shown in 1996 that we used to call the New Sejour condition, based basically on the Palace land dilemma uh, and uh, other topological uh, 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 arguments, was the only way to ascertain, ascertain when a given uh, basin uh, uh, was WADA or not. But quite recently, and uh, in this paper uh, that has uh, for title Testing for Basins of WADA, uh, uh, we, in collaboration with Professor York, uh, we made a step forward by uh, giving another uh, uh, a, a new algorithm it's uh, actually rather simple a numerical algorithm uh, where we associate uh, uh, a number to a given basin and according to this uh, uh, number uh, when uh, uh, that we call uh, w um, in this case, W3, uh, because we have three three attractors. If this number is uh, which is uh, comprised between zero and one, if it is one, we can affirm that the system is full WADA. In cases where this uh, uh, the result of the algorithm is a number less than one, we uh, can uh, say that the system is partially WADA. And we have found examples uh, uh, showing, showing this in some dynamical systems. But we kept investigating this further. And in 2018, we published uh, this paper on scientific reports concerning when a basin is WADA, the merging method. Well, <clears throat> the main idea of the merging method is that WADA boundaries remain unaltered when the basins are merged. This is uh, uh, it, it, this can be seen in the picture that uh, you have on the uh, left hand side, which actually, uh, uh, of course, it appears in the paper, but in this, this picture uh, is the cover of the Spanish Journal of Physics, that, which is the journal of the Spanish Royal Physic, uh, Physics Society. And um, in the picture, you have uh, 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 the uh, basin of attraction of the pendulum, and the uh, on the on the right, uh, uh, basically what you do is to merge the blue and the red; it becomes yellow, and you observe that the boundaries uh, uh, are unalt unaltered. Similar, you do with the other combination of two colors. And that was uh, uh, something surprising, and uh, uh, which uh, uh, we discovered that uh, is actually a, a, a better algorithm than the uh, algorithm uh, I showed you before, in the sense that it's quicker and very easy to identify when uh, given a, 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 basin, a, a basin is WADA or not. If we look at the uh, picture on the on the right, uh, you will see that, of course, when we merge there the two colors, the situation is completely different. It means that in this case is not Guada. We can say that the only point that is an altar is actually the center. Okay. And still, we found a new method that was published a few years later which is the method that we call saddle straddle method to test water basins. The idea is that embedded in the water boundaries, there is only one saddle, which is chaotic. If you observe in the picture on the, on the upper uh, right, uh, what we do is to, uh, we keep the red color of, uh, of the basin or the red basin, and the other two basins are uh, merged in white. So we have basically in this picture we have two uh, uh, two basins and we compute the the uh, chaotic saddle associated to these two basins. Okay, and we proceed to do exactly the same idea with the other combinations. 
And we observe that basically the chaotic saddle is the same. What tell us? These tell us that actually there is only one boundary. If there is only one boundary, it means that the basin is water. That's the, the basic idea. So uh, here in this paper that uh, is uh, uh, 21 years ago, uh, we published uh, 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 for the first time that the uh, uh, Henon Hales Hamiltonian had water basins, and, and uh, uh, this was published in Physical Review E. You can uh, see here uh, basically the same picture I saw you before. So, and this illustrates uh, us somehow the motivation. Can we say that water basins are more unpredictable? During many years, there were many vague affirmations in the literature. Whenever uh, somebody was proving that a given a dynamical system has uh, some basins that are where water, typically you could see in the literature the sentence, oh, this proves that the system is more unpredictable. But can we measure that unpredictability? No one made uh, uh, this uh, measurement before. It seems to be a problem, uh, just as a motivation, uh, uh, it seems to be a problem arising in many scientific fields. For instance, uh, let me illustrate this example <clears throat> from the Journal of Astrophysics and Space Science, showing uh, escape dynamics and fractal basin boundaries in the three-dimensional Earth, uh, Earth Moon system, or this one published in Op Optic Express on the stabilities and fractal basins of attraction in optical system optimization, or this one uh, uh, in the Journal of Physical Chemistry visualizing basin of attraction for different minimization algorithm, or even this one uh, 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 concerning biodiversity and ecology in, in a paper uh, 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 titled Fundamental Unpredictability Multispecies Competition uh, published in the American Naturalist, or this uh, uh, even this one in Physical Review Letters, Exploring Classical Chaotic Potential with the Matter Wave Quantum Proof, or even in economy, fundamental sources of economic uh, complexity. For a review of this uh, subject, uh, well, uh, the paper was published, we published this paper, Reviews of Modern Physics in 2009. Of course, a lot of work has been done in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, in, the, in this, uh, let's say, more than 10 years, but especially for students who want to get in, in, in touch with this uh, uh, fascinating uh, uh, discipline, with this fascinating research line, I will recommend you to, to go into this uh, paper on reviews of modern physics on fractal structure in nonlinear dynamics, where <coughs> we reviewed the, the whole literature on fractal structures, uh, water basins, riddle basins, uh, etc and uh, uh, with a lot of uh, uh, references and illustrations and good examples. Again, we have here a collection of pictures of the Henon Hales for different values of the energy. You can observe that uh, 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 as the energy increases, the fractality uh, decreases. Of course, this makes sense because, uh, for instance, if we look at the picture on the uh, on the right with an energy 0 0.50, it means that the velocity of the initial conditions uh, uh, is very strong. So its capacity to uh, go out of this region uh, through one of the exits is uh, 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 quicker. So this, uh, as a consequence, uh, is manifested in the in the uh, basis of attraction. So there are some uh, questions uh, that uh, motivated also our interest in this in this topic. Is which basin is more fractal, and why? Which basin has a larger uncertainty? How can we measure the uncertainty of a basin? And all this brought us to the definition of the basin entropy which is, uh, uh, for all of you, 
interested, uh, I, I recommend to go to this paper of scientific reports from 2016. The idea is very simple. You have uh, the, 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 the basin. <clears throat> we, we construct a, a grid of uh, uh, size epsilon, and we compute the probability of the color as the proportion of the color inside the box. So this uh, brings us to the computation of the entropy for a box, as this expression uh, here, SI uh, uh, sum of PIJ log PIJ. So for the total entropy for M boxes, we make the sum over N. And finally, uh, to normalize, we define the basic entropy as the uh, SB, as the this total entropy divided by N, so that this uh, quantifies the unpredictability. And this gives a number between zero and log of Na, where Na is the number of colors or attractors. Well, <clears throat> uh, uh, one thing is the, the, I will say, the algorithm by which you get a number. And another thing is this expression basically tell us, give us information about which are the main ingredients uh, uh, taken into account for the computation of the basic entropy. And there are basically three uh, main ingredients. On the one hand, uh, uh, nk over n tilde, which is associated to the boundary size. On the other hand, uh, alpha k, which is the answering exponent. And on the other hand, the number of attractors or color mk. In any case, all these terms depend on the dynamics and are independent of the scaling box size. And I will give you some examples. So when, uh, how is the influence of these three uh, ingredients? The first example, uh, in the first example, I pretend to show you what is the dependence with the size of the boundary. We have the duffing uh, oscillator with uh, uh, no forcing, only dissipation, and uh, uh, the only parameter then is delta. And we have these three pictures, delta 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. And uh, OK, this expression uh, give us the, the computation of the uh, uh, basic entropy in terms of the answer dimension, the boundary size, and the number of attractors, and the boundary size. And the computation of the algorithm is the picture on, on, the, on the bottom where you can see that uh, the basic entropy is uh, smaller for delta 0.3, uh, increases in the case of 0 0.2, and is even larger in the case uh, of delta 0 0.1, something that also our corresponds to our intuition. OK. Uh, Notice that in this case, the three basins have smooth boundaries, so that alpha equal one, but uh, uh, the basin entropy is different. Okay, another example is the dependence with a certain exponent. We have the henon heil system. In the three pictures here corresponding to different values of the energy, 0 0.20, 0 0.21, 0 0.22, we compute the, the basin entropy. And we obtain the values, but for a for a, a given uh, epsilon, uh, the 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 basic entropy of the uh, uh, energy 0 0.22 is smaller. Then uh, for 0 0.21 is larger, and for 0 0.20 is even larger. That means what we already knew that uh, uh, as we increase the energy, the basic entropy decreases. Here in, in this expression uh, uh, is showing us that uh, on, we have chosen the same proportion for each color so that uh, 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 we have the same basing stability, one over three, but all of them have different basing entropy. What means that this technique is also useful for conservative system and in particular for escape basing or acid basings. And here, uh, uh, it's, uh, 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 I'm showing the dependence with the number of attractors. For that, we take the Newton fractal. So in the three pictures, we increase the number of attractors from four to five to six. 
we compute the basing entropy and we uh, obtain that uh, the basing entropy uh, for four attractors is smaller than for five and it's smaller than for six what means that the more attractors the more unpredictable in general so this is in 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 an in interesting uh, result and insight and let's go now uh, to some applications after uh, uh, we were working in the previous ideas we notice uh, 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 this paper by these uh, colleagues from University of Toulouse in France, where they uh, computed, uh, uh, basically they have uh, an optically guided beam splitter for propagating matter waves. And uh, there is a region of scattering observed in the picture on the middle. And uh, in uh, schematically, uh, we have uh, these four exits. And uh, 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 there is an angle uh, uh, of the entrance of the two uh, beams. And uh, there are uh, eventually four possibilities going through exit one, through exit two, or coming back through exit four or exit, exit three. And the picture on the, on the, uh, on the right shows uh, precisely uh, this fractality in the phase space. The Hamiltonian uh, it appears at the at the bottom. Uh, uh, on the one hand, we have the kinetic energy plus the energy associated to its beam. And in in this paper uh, that we published together, oh my goodness, in this paper that we published together. Uh, uh, in Physical Review A on Kinetic Dynamics and Fractal Structure Experiments with Coal Atoms, we uh, 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 okay in the in the in the picture on the on the left shows uh, the scape basing for low speeds. Uh, the colors the color code means uh, 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 which one of the of the exits uh, the particles goes depending on the initial conditions, position, and velocity, and on the right. Uh, basically shows the value of the uh, of the um, basing entropy in terms of the angle of, of, of shooting shooting angle uh, we can see that the basing entropy indicates that for low speed the unpredictability is higher this also makes sense and coincides with our intuitions because uh, uh, for low speed, uh, I will say that uh, using an anthropomorphic uh, argument that the particle may have more difficulties to decide to which exit go, uh, while when the, uh, the, the, the particle uh, has a large speed, it can go, th when, it, when it's uh, sh shooting, it can go through uh, uh, the uh, scattering region and go out uh, for uh, any other exit in a simple manner, as shown by these results. Okay, here is another idea we 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 work on. Uh, we wanted to once we had the tool of the basing entropy, we wanted to study uh, how the basing entropy uh, was varying uh, <clears throat> versus the energy. In the conservative Henon Hales Hamiltonian. You have there the equation of the Henon Hales Hamiltonian with its kinetic energy and potential energy. And in the video, in the video on the right on the on the left, it shows the evolution of the acid basins for uh, uh, different values of the energy barring from uh, almost the escape uh, threshold to a very large uh, uh, value of the energy. You can uh, uh, observe at the very beginning, you could observe that there were some white regions in the interior that corresponds to Cam Islands. And you can see also that as, as uh, uh, the energy increases, the fractality decreases. So, on the on the on the right hand side, uh, we plotted uh, the value of the basing entropy uh, versus the energy, 
And to our surprise, we observed something really interesting that we published later in, a, in, in Nolina Dynamics, in the journal Nolina Dynamics, as a, 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 a mechanism for explanation about the, the how to provide with the basic entropy a way to measure the, the where is the transition between the non-hyperbolic regime to the hyperbolic regime. The, uh, if you see this uh, uh, red line uh, dividing uh, the, 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 the for uh, around 0 0.24, something like that, uh, on the uh, right hand, uh, on the left hand side, we have the so-called non-hyperbolic regime, which uh, uh, is characterized basically by the presence of Kang Islands, and we observe some fluctuations in the basin in the basin entropy. In the uh, hyperbolic regime on the on the right, we observe a monot monotonous decrease in in the basin entropy, um, and which is basically which is due to the absence of calm islands uh, that uh, uh, such as are defined in the hyperbolic regime. Interestingly enough, uh, we have been also uh, investigating the reasons of these fluctuations in the values of, uh, uh, of SV, uh, or the basic entropy, and we have discovered that it is associated to uh, the bifurcations of some heteroclinic connections uh, of the Cam Islands uh, in this region. And we uh, have uh, uh, written a, a, a paper uh, on showing all these results that uh, we have uh, submitted uh, uh, very recently uh, to, uh, uh, for publication. So uh, also we applied the idea uh, in another uh, problem we were working with the relativistic Henon Hales uh, system. Uh, these are the uh, two of the papers where we published these results. Uh, the first one on global relativistic effects in QD scattering. You have the equations of the Henon Hales. Uh, of the relativistic Henon-Hale system, and uh, we uh, uh, decided to study the basic entropy versus the parameter beta, which is basically V over C, the velocity of the particle uh, over the speed of light. And we discovered that uh, for different values of beta, we started with the Newtonian. Uh, you see the pictures where there are some black regions that uh, these are uh, signatures of the uh, CAM regions. And uh, for beta equals 0 0.4, uh, we notice that uh, there is a CAM destruction. There is no CAM islands anymore. And uh, as beta increases, meaning that the velocity uh, approaches uh, uh, speed of light, uh, the, the fractality of the pictures uh, almost, almost disappear. And finally, <clears throat> another, another interesting problem where we have applied our ideas is con concerns black hole shadows. Here we have uh, in these pictures, uh, on the one hand, the picture of the binary black hole and the LIGO uh, experiment that brought uh, uh, the discovering of uh, gravitational waves. Uh, on the left, uh, on the right, uh, sorry, we have the, the, the picture of the event horizon telescope that uh, it was instrumental uh, to, to uh, uh, this collaboration to make the first image of a black hole which is the black hole shadow appearing in the in the in the middle, uh, which corresponds to the center of the M87 galaxy, uh, that it was shown uh, uh, to the world on April 10, 2019. And the interesting thing is that on the one hand we can simulate black hole shadows <clears throat> by using the method of the ray tracing which consists of tracing photons away from the camera lens backwards in time. 
so that the shadow is a region of image where rays are traced back to the to a black hole and rays can escape to infinity the rays that that escape to infinity are bright regions of image interestingly enough in the language of nonlinear dynamics a black hole shadow is an exit basin in an open hamiltonian dynamical system here is again the the first photo of a black hole shadow from the Event Horizon Telescope, April 10, 2019. And here a couple of books uh, um, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the left uh, from George, the Greek astronomer, George Contopoulos, Order and Chaos in Dynamic Astronomy. And on the, on the, on the right, a Principle of Gravitational Lensings, because gravitational lensings is uh, very important also in this context. And here is the uh, schematically the fate of photons around a binary black hole. We have uh, the black hole one, the black hole two, and uh, uh, through the ray tracing around the two black holes, we have either the fall into the black hole one, fall into black hole two, or escape to infinity. And also uh, there might exist unstable perpetual orbits that neither that are neither scattered nor absorbed. These are uh, results uh, already known from a paper from Jost Contopoulos uh, uh, in the Proceeding of the Royal Society of London A in, in, in 1990. And here is an example of, of, uh, of unstable perpetual orbits, uh, 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 either the red ones around the black hole, the, the eight one around uh, uh, the two black holes, and the blue one around the, the two black holes. So uh, by using the uh, Mayundar Papapetru binary black hole or die hole formalism, which corresponds to a static axisymmetric solution of the Einstein's Einstein Maxwell equation of gravity and electromagnetism, and by using the metric for two extremely charged black holes in static equilibrium, okay, we get these uh, formulas, and then uh, we are interested in the light rays which are the null geodesics, leading to the following open Hamiltonian. In the first uh, formula, applying the null condition implies that B should be less or equal to zero, <clears throat> what uh, basically bring us to the equation H equals plus minus P sub phi. And <clears throat> by using uh, uh, symmetries, um, uh, other other uh, constraints, <clears throat> we uh, uh, are able to reduce the, the system to a very simplified system. And here is the uh, biggest simplification. <clears throat> uh, this is the phase space structure of the Mayundar Papapetro Hamiltonian. The Hamiltonian is open when P phi is less than P phi star. And uh, um, uh, if we define delta P phi as P phi star minus P phi, we come, uh, okay, here uh, you see the phase space, that you, you see three saddles uh, the, the, and the critical contour around a, 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 a saddle uh, um, in the middle. In, in, uh, well, not it's not in the middle, it's in the uh, square root of three over two, zero. And the blue curve is a contour, uh, uh, P phi star minus delta uh, uh, P phi. Okay. And uh, here is the computation of the exit basin phase space with two choices of shooting initial orbits. The first one, uh, <clears throat> we, we, in, the first, in the first one, we choose uh, particles uh, in the circle and we uh, uh, make a... Uh, 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 through this uh, set of initial conditions, we have uh, three different regions. Let's say the black hole on the uh, 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 located in up, and the black hole up uh, down, or escape to infinity, which is shown by these different uh, uh, pictures on, on on top for different values of delta p phi, and in the in the bottom. The, uh, we have selected uh, uh, particles starting shooting in a different manner. So bringing uh, to these uh, pictures, uh, the blue curve again is the contour P phi star minus delta P phi. 
Um, surprisingly enough, uh, this is very similar to uh, the Henon Hales Hamiltonian. There is a strong resemblance with the Henon Hales Hamiltonian. Here we have the Henon Hales Hamiltonian. Here is the, uh, uh, you can see the expression of the Hamiltonian and the potential. As I mentioned you earlier, the critical energy uh, E star is one over six. So the point zero zero is a minimum. And for values of the energy above this critical energy, the system is, is open. And uh, similarly as before, uh, here I'm showing you the Henon Hales Hamiltonian, uh, uh, so the exit basins in phase space with two different choices of sodium. Uh, from right to left, uh, the value of the delta energy is uh, uh, 0 0.01, 0 0.03, 0 0.05. You will see that uh, the fractality decreases and also the CAM islands de disappears. And uh, similarly, in the in the figures uh, uh, shown on the on the on the uh, down. So here. <clears throat> um, here is the 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 uh, for the Majundar Papa Petru uh, system. Here we have the water property in phase space. Uh, so we 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 use the 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 merging method. We have uh, this uh, uh, basin uh, for that was computed for delta P phi to be zero point zero five, and we check uh, for. And um, you will see uh, 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 is illustrated the 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 merging method, uh, concluding that the system had the water the water property, and we 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 check that results for values of delta p phi in a very large uh, interval from 0 0.02 to 0 0.15. We didn't check. For values very 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 small, close to zero, because it takes a lot of time and it's very time-consuming. But uh, we have the strong uh, feeling, a strong intuition that it works as well. And here uh, I will illustrate you the shadows of the Majundar Papa Petru binary black hole. Uh, the schematic way of uh, this picture is by an observer far far enough from the black holes. Um, and with a certain uh, uh, a certain distance and also a certain value of, of, of the angle. Uh, here, uh, 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 this is what is shown in these pictures, are the shadows cast by a static Majundar Papa Petro boundary black hole for different values of the separation between black holes. On the uh, left is D equals one, on the right D equals two. The photons which escape to spatial infinity are plotting green. The shadow cast by the upper lower black hole are plotting blue or red. And the three open sets can be viewed as exit basins defined on the image plane of a distant observer. And in the figure on top, it's plot the percentage of non water points, showing <clears throat> that for values uh, uh, of D. Uh, a little bit beyond one, if there is a big number, sorry, a very small number of known water points, it means that the, the system is, is water. Um, for values from D beyond this value until uh, approximately two, uh, we can observe that is slightly different from zero, uh, so it means that the, in this area, the system is partially water. And what uh, uh, our simulations tell us is that beyond this value, there is a continuous trend on increasing, uh, what means that the, the, the system uh, uh, stops to be water. So here is a, uh, a picture showing the similar hierarchy of eyebrow-like structures showing uh, precisely uh, uh, the fractality of these uh, regions. Uh, here is more evident. So uh, uh, as a matter of fact, the system is non-integrable, uh, showing that, uh, 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 indicating that the system possesses QD scattering um, um, and so in fractal structures. 
And to conclude, uh, as a summary and conclusions, uh, I will say that we have developed new methods for testing water basins, the grid method, the merging method, and the saddle straddle method. The basin entropy quantifies the final state and predictability of dynamical systems. It constitutes a new tool for the exploration of the uncertainty in nonlinear dynamics. We have applied these methods to different domains in physics, such as coal atoms, shadows of binary black holes, and classical and relativistic geodes scattering in astrophysics. And to end, we believe that the concept of basic entropy will become an important tool in complex system studies with applications in multiple scientific fields, especially those with multi-stability and other scientific areas as well. And just uh, 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 here in this last uh, uh, for your uh, interest are uh, all the publications or almost all the publications that we have uh, done on this uh, topic. Let me uh, mention uh, the last one, which is not yet uh, uh, published, on classifying basic attraction using the basic entropy. We have developed a method to, to use uh, using the basic entropy that allows us to find a uh, 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 classification method for basins. And uh, in the, the, the paper uh, with title How to Detect Water Basins, published in the journal Discrete and Continuous Dynamical Systems Series B, is a good uh, paper for those who want to use uh, uh, the algorithm of water basins because this is a sort of mini review explaining all methods uh, 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 to detect weather basins until until that time and uh, okay i stop here and i thank you very much for your attention thank you professor thank you so time for questions <clears throat> So thank you, Professor Sanjivan, for a very fascinating talk. And uh, it's a really enjoyable talk. And uh, you have been uh, working hard on, uh, on uh, classifying uh, chaotic dynamical systems based on this uh, basin uh, uh, boundary studies and uh, basin entropy. So it's a very good uh, uh, way of uh, specifying uh, chaotic dynamical systems. So I have a few basic questions. Uh, so how do you distinguish, um, I mean, I see many uh, many of the Hamiltonian systems like Hanan Hiles and uh, black hole dynamics and so on. Uh, so how do you distinguish between uh, uh, dissipative systems, so dissipative chaos and Hamiltonian chaos from fractal basin uh, study point of view? From, okay. Yeah. Okay, as, as I as I explain in my talk, uh, from the I will say that from the algorithmic point of view, uh, uh, there is no distinction. Uh, from the conceptual point of view, there is, of course. If you have a dissipative system, the conceptual uh, point of view is the following: If you have a dissipative system say the pendulum or the duffing oscillator, etc. you have attractors. Yes. So if you have attractors, it means that there will be regions in phase space that will go to one attractor or to the other. Okay? That's the way, the conceptual uh, uh, way for dissipative systems. In case you have a Hamiltonian system, uh, uh, you need for the analysis we have uh, made, you need to have an open Hamiltonian system. What, what does an open Hamiltonian system means? It means that as I saw in the case of the Henon Hales, uh, there is a critical energy, which is one over six. If you take values of the energy below this energy, the, the, all the orbits are bounded. There will be no orbits escaping the scattering region. 
So you cannot you cannot say anything as uh, uh, what I have said. You need to consider values of the energy above the critical energy because if you, you can also have you can also have uh, coupled uh, um, I mean conservative uh, Hamiltonians uh, coupled uh, say coupled quartic oscillators. Doesn't can... matter. Th doesn't matter. There is no no. I mean it's it's completely general. It's completely general. But. That's what I was trying to explain. The key thing is that you need to have escapes so that the Hamiltonian needs to be open. Open means that if you consider a region in phase space around the, your uh, uh, center of, of coordinates, uh, orbits may, may be unbounded and escape to the infinity. So, it, 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 as in the case of the of the Henon Hales, you have there are three possibilities. Yes, that these three exits. Well, uh, uh, there are some authors uh, working in uh, celestial mechanics, like uh, uh, Professor Contopoulos, I mentioned in, in my talk, that uh, they have been studying systematically uh, in celestial mechanics uh, open Hamiltonian systems with. Uh, with uh, four exits or five exits or whatever, uh, that's a matter for for the for the for the question I have described is independent on that. Uh, 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 but but that's the main uh, I would say conceptual difference between uh, conservative and um, Hamiltonians. Actually, actually, uh, 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 is it possible also to use uh, 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 in, 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 I mean, you can define as well what what do you understand by by I will say by exit, because imagine it's just uh, is is a imagination. Imagine you are studying a ball, uh, 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 imagine a particle of a gas in a cube. Okay, that, that supposedly is uh, 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 scattered around the the walls of the of the. Of the of the uh, of the box, you can decide that whenever it goes to to one wall, you call it uh, exit one. When it goes to another wall, you call it uh, exit two. And artificially creating these pictures and analyzing the unpredictability associated. Yeah. So for the Hamiltonian system, it's clear. So take the case of Duffin oscillator. So, so the Duffin oscillator, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Please, please go ahead. So, how do you describe this, this fractal, uh, fractal basin study? How do in you the, go ahead? In the in the Duffin oscillator? Yes. It is even simpler because all you need to have is uh, 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 a, a less. Uh, I mean, whenever you have two attractors, there is a boundary uh, uh, between uh, in phase space, and this boundary may be smooth or fractal. If it's uh, smooth, uh, this is the simplest case. Uh, but uh, 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 most cases, when the system is chaotic, the boundary will be uh, fractal. But if you have three or more attractors, most likely you might have uh, 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 water basins, implying that the level of unpredictability is even stronger. But we have analyzed, for instance, uh, we have made computations with the water basins, analyzing uh, many, many sets of, uh, uh, of parameters. And uh, we have found situations with, uh, I don't know, more than 10 attractors. Uh, uh, even even <clears throat> you may find a, a very large number of attractors, or even you may find uh, 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 parameters for which uh, um, there is a fractal, fractal uh, uh, um, boundaries and non-fractal boundaries uh, i mean it's uh, so can you also extend the study to more number of degrees of freedom uh, uh, in, principle, in, in principle yes <clears throat> and this is something we have um, i mean we, we we are trying to to find ways to do it of course the complications become basically computational okay but of course there is no 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 no, I mean, uh, no problem at all. Uh, I insist the main problem is computational. Okay. Of course, 
of course, as you may understand, uh, Professor Lasmalan, it's very clear that uh, uh, in order to to have a, 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 a clear and easier idea of these uh, uh, problems is by using two-dimensional two-dimensional surfaces, of course. Okay, thank you very much. But, but there is no no problem at all in increasing. Um, uh, 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 it it would be really it would be really great actually uh, uh, going into further dimensions. But but you know there will be also problems of visualization because I know that there have been some attempts. But uh, su suppose you you make a, a study of uh, uh, three dim uh, three dimension three-dimensional, but then when you want to show, you make kind of uh, cuts, you know? Uh, so finally, in order to visualize, you need a two-dimensional uh, surface. Okay. It's like uh, some techniques of imaging in medicine, you know, yeah. that you may find a, a, a three-dimensional body, but then you need to make a kind of a cam cut uh, uh, on the... Uh, uh, surface uh, 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 cut to visualize uh, what's the 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 how a certain property or whatever uh, appears uh, in three dimensions okay okay thank you very much thank you you are welcome so questions from other participants any questions from the students That's true. Um, they are a bit hesitating, I think. <laughs> no, no problem, no problem. <laughs> I will be happy indeed. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> maybe they will ask by email. I don't know. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. If you, if you, if you, you, you have, uh, you can uh, give them my email address. Uh, sure. Uh, yeah, sure. and if they if they want to to ask for anything, they please uh, let uh, let them know. Uh, I think there is a question in the chat box, so you can look at that. Excuse me. There is a question in the chat box. Can can you open your chat box? Uh, uh, right now. What is it? Oh, it's uh, disabled in nature. Okay. Okay, there is a question asking about what a multi-stable system. A multi-stable system basically is a system that has many different possibilities uh, uh, according to uh, uh, different uh, starting in, in, in different... Uh, 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 technically, if, if you start with different uh, um, um, initial conditions, uh, you may find different possibilities of, of, uh, of finding a solution. This is typical of any nonlinear system, and I will say it's typical in, uh, in, in uh, most dynamical systems, nonlinear dynamical systems. So, uh, why particularly using initial continuous study basing on multi stability? Well, precisely when there are multi stability, this is when we find problems because if there will be only one stable solution, there will be no problem. Every point will go to the same attractor. The problem is when there is a complication and uh, uh, very close uh, uh, initial conditions may bring out different solutions. That's the, the importance of the multi-stability and the study of this uh, of the of the nature of the basins. Imagine, I mean, intuitively, imagine what happens. Uh, I mean. Uh, uh, if you are in a mountain region, uh, which is a, 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 a boundary of uh, different regions, etc., uh, etc., et well, you, 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 one, you, you may have one object, and, and uh, by simply using uh, gravitational forces, may go to the left or may go to the to, to, to the to, to, to the right. But there are situations where the number of of, of, of possibilities. Is very very large, and uh, I insist this is a very important concept. Uh, I will say, in sciences, and very important concept for the way uh, science should evolve. Because 
these simple situations where we have only one attractor, everything is simple, blah, 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 blah. This, this does not correspond to the reality. So it says here in the slide number 41, how to split non-hyperbolic and hyperbolic in energy basing diagram. Yeah. Uh, 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 okay. Uh, uh, this concerns, uh, this concerns, uh, concerns the, the in, in that, in that particular uh, slide, it was the uh, study, the evolution of the basing entropy versus uh, the value of the energy for the Henohales. And we observe that there is precisely one value where it's the, the red dash line at that particular value where there was, we observed that the curve had a transition. So this transition, uh, we were surprised why the curve presents this transition here precisely at this point. And we noticed that this corresponded precisely to the transition from the non-hyperbolic region to the hyperbolic region. It's well known that in the non-hyperbolic region, you may find Cam Islands. In the hyperbolic region, you don't find Cam Islands. So if, 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 if there is no Cam Islands, Technically, from the point of view of the basins, et cetera, et cetera, all, there, there will be no, no white points. So, so that, that explains that the decrease of the basin entropy versus the energy is monotonous. And we could observe this monoton monotonously decreasing curve, while in the non-hyperbolic uh, uh, region, According to variations of the energy, there are, there are values of the energy that appears larger regions of Kang Islands, etc., etc., which makes these variations of the basin entropy. Because the basin entropy algorithmically measures basically the number of, of initial conditions bringing to the different exits. Yeah. So. Are there more questions from the audience, students? Are you, you want some clarifications, students? So, yeah, here is the. Okay, you can you can please please uh, pass them my email address. Yeah. Uh, sure. If they want to, if they, if they want to discuss anything uh, or ask for some. Uh, particular papers or some further information, they can contact me, okay? Sure, I will pass it to the students. Uh, okay. So, since there are no more questions, it time has come to wind up the session. Uh, so, I thank Professor Sandman for giving, for accepting our invitation and giving a very illustrated talk on uh, Basin of Attractions. Thank you, Professor. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you to you, and I hope I, I really hope to be able to visit India soon. Yeah, sure, sure, sir. Once uh, the situation comes normal, we will invite you. Yeah, okay. yeah, thank you. Please accept our invitation. Bye bye. Bye bye, everybody. Bye bye. Bye bye.